All right, these are the answers to questions one to four on page uh, 18. First question is, write a sentence that shows the relationship among the following terms, DNA, gene, and protein. So a gene is a section of DNA. So DNA is very large, and a gene is a small section of it that contains information on how to build a protein. And a protein is built out of amino acids, and amino acids are put together in a per particular order. But anyway, the sentence would be, DNA is divided into genes, and genes have instructions on how to build a protein. What is the role of genes in the cell? Well, genes um, have the proper information on how to build proteins, and also uh, how many of those proteins to make and when to make them. Um, and that's why the nucleus is considered to be the control place, the control center of the cell, because it contains all that information on what's getting made and when and how much. Number three, figure 1.9, how do genes vary? Well, this is figure 1.9 here, this drawing of the DNA, and you can see all the A's and T's and C's and G's in various orders here. So um, a gene might be a section of this DNA here. Okay, now this is, this is a very small piece of DNA because we've, we've said that each of these is a base pair and there are about 3 billion of them in your DNA. So, um, so variances though or changes in the DNA could be, well, this one here is an A. Well, maybe it was changed and mutated into a, a C. And so now there's a C and a G here instead of an A and a T. So a small change in that DNA can end up changing the way that the protein um, in that, 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 that gene builds will end up being, uh, how it will end up sh being shaped and how it will then function because the shape of the protein is important for its function, so how it works. How do you think it is possible for a genetic code with only four components, A, C, T, and G, to control the production of thousands of different kinds of proteins? It might help to think of the building blocks as letters of an alphabet and to remember that each gene is made of thousands of building blocks. Okay, so a gene is lots of those base pairs, A and then C and then C and then A and G and T and all those things, right? Um, so this was a puzzle for, for a long time to try to figure out how is it that just four letters... Here's a random selection of, of, of bases. So this is one side of the DNA. So on the other side, it has to be a T here, an A here, an A here, a C here, a G, G, T, A, T, C, C, G. That's the pairing rules. On the other side, you always have to have the right, it's always got to be an A and a T. And a T A T C G C G C G A T A T A T C G C G C G. Now it happens that this alternated. That's that was random. Let's do another G. Okay, so it, it's the order can be whatever it is. This is like it's like letters of the alphabet. A and T always pair. Doesn't matter which way they go though. So. If this is a gene, this is a very short gene, it's only a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 base pairs. Now I'm just going to forget about this side for now and say, well, if this is the gene, this is the information here, it has to have, happens to have that mirror of it on the other side, but this is a, a, a section with information on it. So there are 20 amino acids that make proteins. So the question was, well, is like, does A, let's say, um, I'm just going to number them, amino acid number 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's up to 20. Okay. They have names like alanine, gua, uh, alanine uh, threonine, aspartic acid, things like that. There's, there's names for them, but we'll just say 1, 2, 3, up to 20. So if we had, if an adenine always led to amino acid 1, 
and T always made amino acid 2, well that would be a 2, and then maybe guanine was amino acid 3, and C was amino acid 4, then this would be another 4, and another 1, and another 2, and another 1. If there was a 1 to 1 relationship between the base and the amino acid that it makes, you'd only have room to make proteins with 4 amino acids. And there are 20 amino acids. So that doesn't work. Now if you do a little math and say, well, what if it's actually AT together, so two letters, maybe AT makes amino acid 1, TG makes amino acid 2, and CC makes amino acid 3. Well, with four letters, the number of combinations you can get is 16. There's A, 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 T, A, C, A, G, T, A, T, 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 C, T, G, C, A, C, T, C, 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 G, and G, A, G, T, G, C, G, G. Those are the 16 possibilities. So, if amino acid 1, well, there's AT, okay, so that's 1. And TG, I did this out of order, but TG, that's 2. And CC, that's 3. And AT, well, there's another, there's another 1. Right? AT, AG, well, let's say that's 5. Okay, but anyway, you see there's only 16 possibilities. And we already said... There are 20 amino acids. So a two-letter code is not enough to make, to bring in all 20 amino acids there are. There's 16 combinations, and there's 20 amino acids. So that's not going to work. So they went to the next level. And said, well, what if it was three? ATT? so on could code for one amino acid. And there are many possibilities. In fact, there are, I'm just doing the math here. I'm looking at a poster. I'm just going to bring this over and I'll show you. So over in the side of the class here, you see that it has been figured out, this here, is the genetic code. Now, right now you're going to see U's, C, A, and G, U, C, A, and G. That's cytosine, adenine, guanine, and this is another one called uracil, because actually there's a step that we're not talking about here where it has to turn into RNA first. But let's just pretend U is, is T, okay? So wherever you see U, it's actually a T for now. So A, T, C, and G, those are your four bases. And so if it's T, 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 it's phenylalanine. TTC, phenylalanine. TTA, leucine. These are different amino acids. So all of the different amino acids, there's 20 of them here, and all these different combinations of three bases, C, G, and G, arginine, that brings that arginine amino acid in, in that spot. So there's enough of these little things. These are called Codons, doesn't really matter though, but it's a three-letter code that brings in the right amino acid and builds the protein correctly. There's also one here called the start that tells it where to begin, and a couple of them here called stop, which tells them when to stop. So in the DNA, it's written in, start reading here, bring in an amino acid, and it moves along. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. Um, <clears throat> and the, the start one, let's just say ATG. It was, so that tells the ribosome, actually, where to begin. That's the start place, and then it's going to move on and bring in whatever it says. And then another three, and then another three, and then another three. So those three-letter codes are actually what tell 
the ribosome how to bring in amino acids to make the right chain and have the right amino acids in there. That's a long answer to a question four.